as I live in the mountain, now it's getting very cold, to be honest. Okay, guys, so welcome to our session. It's nice to be here with you today. Good night to everyone. Thanks for connecting at this time of the day. It's great to see you. So we're going to start with our 28th class. Let me share my screen and we start. One second. And here we are. So class number 28, guys, welcome. Remember, you can always subscribe our YouTube channel. Thank you for showing your face. I really like to see you, so thanks a lot. Uh, you can share us on your social media, always. That is highly appreciated. And yeah, for this month, mindfulness and learning, that is helpful, so you can go there. We also have our Discord channel as usual, and let's do what we have prepared for today. So today we have unit four. We're going to continue with our writing workshops. It is class number 28. We only have like eight or nine classes left, guys. So it's been a pleasure. So <clears throat> last class, we talked about characters and settings. We know that every short story has five elements. These, five or more, it could be more. Here are six, as you can see. I put the resolution because we forgot about that. So in this class, we're going to focus on something different. Last class was character and setting. In this class today, students will identify different literary devices in a plot. So we're going to talk about the plot. And Aprovecho también la bienvenida para saludar a los que se vienen conectando. Hello, Jorge. Hello, Valentina, as usual. Nice to see you guys. Francisca, Martin, Sofia. Good to have you here, guys, today. Okay. So, today we're going to talk about the plot. And you are going to see what we have prepared for you today. So, we have the plot, which is like the main story. Like the most important thing of the story. And here we have some common topics of a plot. Do you know any story about the following topic? Write a title in the chat. For example, Overcoming a Monster, Rack to Riches, The Quest, Voyage and Return, Comedy and Tragedy. We're going to start with this one, so let's go right into that. Do you know any story about the following topic? For example, Overcoming a Monster. It could be a movie, it could be a book could be a comics, could be an anime, about something like that. Overcome es un verbo que significa superar o vencer, superar o vencer, in this case. También puede ser overcoming a phobia, for example. But in this case, I want to ask you, do you know any movie about overcoming a monster or a book? There are a few right there. Maybe you remember. A video game also works, Bastian. A video game is also a story. So which one? Omori, okay. Is it like, um, like a huge beast like this one? This is like Godzilla. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, Franco. <laughs> Great job. Godzilla. That is the one. Uh, Valentina, King Kong, exactly. That's overcoming a terrible beast, a terrible gorilla. Uh, and yeah, Jorge says, obviously King Kong. That one is the most famous. So as you can see, King Kong is a very basic plot. It's just about overcoming a monster. That's like the whole thing, like killing a monster and that's it. The monster is the bad guy of the movie. Okay, thank you, very good, you know. We have one more comment. Oh, sorry, I don't remember. No problem. Let's see if you remember the following one. So this is the next topic. Do you know any story about this topic? Rags to riches. Someone who was poor and for some reason become a millionaire. This is like a very common topic in literature or, in, or also in movies or series as well. There are some of them. There is an Indian one, which is very important. 
any idea about this one? Let's see. Yeah, that's a good one, Paula. El Príncipe y el Mendigo. I forgot the name in English, but yeah, that's a good one. Um, I don't know if you know, but maybe hay una película india que se llama Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Millionaire. I don't know if you've seen that movie. It's a great movie, in my opinion. I love it. So that is Rack to Riches. Someone who was poor and for some reason becomes rich. Uh, this is a topic that can be seen in literature from the 16th, 16th century. So many centuries of the same topics. These are the most common ones. Let's continue with the following one. We have a comment. Poor dad, rich dad. Very good. But that is not a story, to be honest. That is, those are like um, financial tips, maybe. So, but, but very good idea, to be honest. Yeah, Franco, Robin Hood is the classic in this case. <clears throat> so Robin Hood is a social warrior. We talked about him in the last class. And yeah, we can say that is an example of rag to riches. Rags quiere decir como estropajos, como ropa vieja, rags. Exactly, King Arthur, Jorge. Super, you remembered British literature, King Ar Arthur. And the football player as well, right. Um, for example, Arturo Vidal used to be very poor and now he's a millionaire. So yeah, that is a good story. Ronaldo as well, yeah. <clears throat> Cristiano Ronaldo, for example. He used to be very poor, but when he was discovered as a talent, he became a millionaire in a few years only. Okay, super, you remember this. Now let's continue with the following topic, guys. The quest. So do you know any story about the following topic? La más común es Misión Imposible, of course. So the quest is a mission, something that needs to be done. Hi, Martin. Hi there. How are you? Hey there, Antonia. Nice to see you. Welcome, guys. A todos los que vienen entrando, welcome. And nice to see you, everyone. I'm doing great today, Martin. Thank you. Okay, do you remember, guys, any kind of title about the quest, una misión? It could be a game, as Bastian was saying. A lot of games are about a quest. So there are a lot of stories about the quest. For example, Mario. Mario is the classic mission about saving the princess. So that is a quest. Yeah, exactly. The Legend of Zelda. Very good. <laughs> Guys, I'm playing The Legend of Zelda on my DS. <laughs> I have that right, right here. <laughs> it's a very good game. Sonic, exactly, Martin. Sonic is a mission, a lot of different missions, but that is the, the idea, a quest. For example, um, a, the Johnny Depp movie, The Pirates of the Caribbean, that is also a quest, a very famous quest in this case. The Last of Us. The Last of Us could be, but it's more complex than that, Jorge, I think. Metroid as well. Metroid is also a mission and a very difficult game, to be honest. I haven't beaten Metroid yet. It's difficult. Spider-Man, exactly. Spider-Man, you can see that he has a quest, for example, in Spider-Man 4, and he's also a hero. So you can create a very good story with Spider-Man and a quest. Okay, super. Let's continue with this one. This is a more classic topic. So voyage means un viaje, un viaje largo. That is a voyage. A return is obviously a vuelta. So do you know any story about a voyage and a return? This one is a classic of the literature, to be honest. Exactly, that's it, the Odyssey. This one is the Odyssey. So it's about a guy who leaves the city and then comes back after a lot of different missions. So that is the classic one. That is the Odyssey. Do you know anything else? Voyage and return. Exactly. Very good, Martin. El viaje al centro de la tierra. That's it. 
or for, for example, Julio Verne's novels. Those are voyages and returns. Very good, super, you know about literature, guys. Great job. And for example, uh, Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon is a voyage and return. Um, okay, so I can see that you know. Um, exactly, Valentina, Volver al Futuro, that's the one. This topic is very classic, to be honest, and very common in literature from the from the year zero, basically, from the Greeks and the Romans. So that is it for this part. Let's continue. Do you know any story about the following topic? Comedy, guys? Do you know the story about comedy? As you can see, comedy is somewhat different, es un poco diferente, to the literature. So literature is more related to place, in this case. Obras de teatro. <clears throat> so yeah, this is comedy. Do you know any story about comedy, maybe? <laughs> the kids of Adam Sandler, Martin? Yeah, Adam Sandler is uh, a very good comedian. Seinfeld says Valentina. That's a perfect example. Very good. Um, um, for example, How I Met Your Mother, Friends. Those are stories about comedy. Very good example, Beatriz. The movie of Kramer, that is also a comedy because that movie is a story as well. So that is a story about comedy. Very good example there. White Chuck and yeah, exactly. And Donde Está Las Rubias. Exactly. Good. Okay, that's it. As you can see, comedy is more related to theater than to literature. Así que es mucho más fácil buscar una película que sea de comedia. So, here we have also tragedy. This is common in both novels and also literature. Sorry, novels and also a plays and theater. So, tragedy. Do you know any title about tragedy? Very good. You remembered almost instantly about Shakespeare. Great. He's like the, the most well-known. Hamlet, exactly, Sophia. Romeo and Juliet. That's a very sad tragedy. Macbeth, Franco. I hope you can read Macbeth. It's very good. I love Macbeth, to be honest. Scream. Very good. Scream. Uh, that movie is very good, to be honest. Homer. Homer is, I think, an author, Homer. <clears throat> and yeah, Bastian, Macbeth, that is also a tragedy. So as you can see, tragedy and comedy are very related to theater, to the place. Hamlet, exactly. So those are about someone who dies. It doesn't matter who, but it's someone who dies. For example, uh, Edipo Rey is the most famous tragedy. And I'm sure you will have to read Edipo Rey at school. Okay, we have one more comment. Cyrano of Ber Bergenac. I haven't seen that, Paolo, or I haven't read that one, to be honest. So, no clue. Okay, very good. We have one more. So, guys, do you know any story about the following topic? Write a title in the chat. Horror. This one is my favorite, to be honest or at least one of my favorites. The Ring, that's the classic, <laughs> The Ring. I watched The Ring when I was a kid and I was really scared. Stranger Things, that is a good one. But I don't really know if Stranger Things is horror. So I'm not sure in that case, maybe it's mystery, which is a little different. Exactly, Martin, that's it. Friday the 13th, that is a very, Scary movie. Okay, very good. Sophia, that is my favorite movie, to be honest. The Shining. It's about uh, I'm a family locked in the mountains. Very good movie, The Shining. My favorite. The Crow, Bestian. Very good. The Crow is a symbol, as you can see. So, it. Exactly, Franco. It. That's a very spooky one. And Paula says, I don't like this type of movies. <gasps> Okay, no problem. Outlast, it's a very scary game. Okay, a game is also a very good story. An American horror story, that's a classic as well. Okay, 
it seems that you know about horror, but I want to ask you guys if you know a difference. What do you think is the difference between terror and horror? Have you ever thought about that? Have you pensado en eso? So there is a very important difference between terror and horror. Can you write it in the chat? Your ideas about this one? Here is a hint. This is a clue, obviously. This is a very classic vampire movie. And this seems like a scene from The Ring, maybe. But there is an important difference about terror and horror. Okay, Martin, that is important, the blood. Okay, the blood in horror. Okay, the blood in horror, exactly. Why? Okay, Paula says, terror just scare, you're right, and horror has to be with blood, exactly. Martin says, in terror is big. Super, so terror is definitely worse or horror is worse? Okay, so. Let, let's try to answer this question in a technical way. Okay, very good, Jorge. Jorge says, also horror is more physical and human damage and the terror is more phantasmagoric. I definitely agree with Jorge because that is like the definition that is here. So the distinction, the difference between horror and terror, it that is is a standard literary and psychological concept applied especially to Gothic and horror fiction. Those are like the lacuna, the, the cradle of the terror and horror movies, to be honest. So as Antonia is saying, terror is something, have little the scary and horror is something paranormal, something like that. So terror is usually described as the feeling of dread and anticipation that precedes the horrifying experience. So if you're like walking in the forest and you see someone um, with a knife, that would be a terrifying experience. That would be terror. But if that person reaches you and actually stabs you with the knife, that is horror. So that is a different experience. Horror is worse than terror. Terror is before and horror is afterwards. When you are, for example, being murdered by someone or being quarreled, agorralado by someone, that is horror, something physical, as you were saying in the chat. It's a very good idea with that. That's definitely something physical. And the terror has to be with the paranormal aspects, the, the specters, for example, the souls, the ghosts, that is terror. And terror is generally associated with our uh, mind and the tricks that our mind plays on us. So that is terror and horror is physical. That's the difference. Terror, mind, horror, body or blood, as you were saying. Blood is definitely associated with horror. And this is a classic as well. I think this is Dracula. So <clears throat> in literature and on, in movies and in general, we have a literary term. Maybe you have studied this term, the motive. So a motive is a recurring idea, like a pattern or a concept throughout a text. Algo que se va repitiendo. A symbol is an object that represents something it is not. A common example is that a heart is a symbol for love. Todos sabemos que un corazón is a symbol for love. A writer may use a symbol to reinforce the motive. So the motive, it's like the general um, idea in this case, the general atmosphere of a text or of a literary um, work. Okay. okay, yes, Jorge, you're right. It wasn't Dracula, thank you. It was Nosferatu, who was the first vampire of the cinema. Sorry for the, for the misconception, thank you a lot. Like connotative and denotative, Franco, exactly. That's it. So in literature, you can create your theme metaphorically 
through sim symbolic motives. You can use different symbols in relation to the concepts you want to develop in your story. So we are going to do a practical example to be very clear with this idea. So if I show you guys this image, what words do you associate with the following image? Write in the chat all the words that you can think when you look at this image. For example, okay, very good. A church, says Paula. Dark, very good, says Bastian. Okay, forest, definitely. We can have abstract concepts or more physical aspects. Fog, very good, fog, like niebla. Jorge says a psycho killer or terror. Sofia says ghosts, very good. Dark, darkness, darkness, exactly. So as you can see, the plot of this story could be about death, could be about ghosts, about the night, about darkness. It couldn't be something happy. It couldn't be something joyful. It, it has to be something dreadful. So the motive, for example, would be all the symbols that have to do with that. For example, uh, I don't know, like an inverted cross, things like that, or uh, a spooky face, or as you can say here, the church, that is a symbol. So maybe there's something going on. Gargalize, says Franco, exactly, very good. A cemetery, exactly. So in this case, zombies, Valentina, wow, exactly. A lot of ideas that are related to death, as you can see. So this is um, a black metal uh, band cover. This is a cover from a black metal band. Okay, very good job, guys. Let's continue. What words or concepts do you associate with the following image? This is quite different, very different. A city, very good. We were here in a city. Okay, what more? Is it like a beautiful city or not really? Okay, what do we have here? Loneliness, two times in a row. Okay, very good, Bastian and Sofia. I was thinking about loneliness. <laughs> Lightning McQueen, you say the car, Martin? <laughs> very good. Okay, super. Empty place, says Paula. Good. Maybe void, like vacío. Okay, very good. Okay, good idea, Jorge. Uh, drug dealer, yeah. This could be a, a scene from Breaking Bad, for example. Could easily be a scene from that. And Bastian, definitely, I agree with you. This is a dystopia. This is not like the real world, to be honest. And this is also a cover from a black metal band. <laughs> so yeah, free architecture diplomas. <laughs> Very good, Frank, exactly. This architecture makes no sense. <laughs> That's a good pun. Good. OK, super. So in this case, we have loneliness, mystery maybe, maybe void, emptiness, um, not something good to be honest, something bad. Let's continue with this one. So this is more complex, guys. This is more abstract. So what words or concept do you associate with this image? Okay, a lot of things, wow. Paula says war, Franco says virus, Martin says second war. Beatriz says pandemic. Martin says Russia. Okay, super. Bastian says nuclear waste. Great. And Paula says murder. Okay, very good. So this is definitely a story about something evil. Definitely. This is definitely evil, like bad, not good. Toxic. Very good, Antonia. This is toxic because the guy is wearing a gas mask. So right, definitely. It could be a deadly gas, says Bastian. It is. Okay, super. 
this is also a cover from, from an album. Um, Sofia says, looks like American Horror Story. Yeah, I think Valentina mentioned something like that before. Yeah, it looks like that. Tranco says, Chernobyl. Someone mentioned Russia before. Chernobyl is definitely associated to that. So yeah, here we have something weird going on, like a pandemic, like um, illness, like something bad for, for the human beings. This guy remembered me, the group of Batman in the final part of the movie. Okay, are, were they gas, guys wearing gas, gas mask? I don't really remember. So you can say this is a face mask or this is a gas mask. Okay, so, so far we've seen three different motives. Um, three different kind of ways in which we can present different literary devices. For example, here, this is a clear symbol of something toxic. So in literature, you will find a lot of different literary devices. Yes, Bastian, Chernobyl is in Ukraine. Uh, yeah, you're right. But well, Russia was invading Chernobyl, so there's a lot going on there. Okay, so let's continue with a very short story. This is a story called The Puppy in the Basement. And this is a ghost story that I found on Reddit, which is super creepy. And it's a short story. So I need a volunteer <laughs> to read this story. I need someone who's not a coward <laughs> to read this one. Okay. Thank you, Martin. You start whenever you want, Martin. Thanks a lot. The puppy, the puppy in the basement. This short ghost story found on Reddit is super creepy. Mommy told me never to go into the basement, but I wanted to see what was making that noise. It kind of sounded like a puppy and I wanted to see it, the puppy. So I opened the basement door and tiptoed down a bite. I didn't see a, a puppy. And then mom yanked me out of the basement and yelled at me. Mommy had never yelled at the baby before. Sorry. No problem, it's great. And it made me sad and I cried. Then mommy told me never to go into the basement again. And she gave me a cookie. That made me feel better. So I didn't ask her why the boy in the basement was making noise like a pop or why he had no hands or feet. Okay, Martin, very good job. I really like the way you read. So nice job there. So here we have a lot of different words, maybe, that you don't know. Quizás hay varias palabras que no conozcan. Así que vamos a ver. Tenemos aquí, uh, well, the basement, que es la, el sótano. Uh, noise, ruido, que sonaba como un cachorrito. Eh, tiptoed, tiptoed. Es como que bajó la cabeza, se agachó y empezó a mirar. Eso es como tiptoed, down a little bit. I see, I didn't see a puppy, janked me out. Janked me out es como que me agarró, me levantó y me sacó. Eso es janked me out of the basement. And yelled at me, me gritó. Eso quiere decir yelled. Mi mamá nunca me había gritado antes y esto me hizo sentir muy triste y lloré. Then mommy told me never to go in the basement again. Nunca volver al sótano de nuevo. Me dio una galletita. Y después me hizo sentir mejor. Así que no le pregunté por qué el niño en el sótano estaba haciendo ruido como un cachorro. O por qué no tenía ni manos ni pies. So, I want to ask you guys. This is the quote. I didn't ask her why the boy in the basement was making noises like a puppy. Or why he had no hands or feet. What do you think is the boy? And why do you think there is a boy? So you can answer in the chat, take your time. I know it's, it could be difficult, but what do you think is the boy and why do you think there is a boy? Maybe you could answer one or two, it doesn't matter. But 
these stories are open for your imagination. So the idea is that you can think about it a little. Just to give you a tip, this is a ghost story. So what could it be? Okay, Jorge says the child is low age because his mother can take him and get out of this room. Okay, so you say that it's like a baby, Jorge, maybe? If yes, Beatriz, you have a very good idea there. I think the boy could be a zombie. That's a nice idea. It could be because had no hands or feet. It should be something death. Uh, the mother dismembered the kid and the kid evolutioned into a ghost. Good idea, Martin. I like that. This is like science fiction with a ghost story. So good idea there. Great. Or a little kid, okay. The boy is seeing his own death. Wow, Bastian. That is a common literary topic as well. Wow, very good ideas there, guys. I love this. <laughs> the boy is seeing his own death. Wow, that's terrible. Valentina says, maybe it was a child that born without hands and feet. Very interesting. And died in the basement. And the mother hide the corpse in there. <gasps> That's very creepy, Valentina, but very good idea. Exactly. Okay, I love this. Very good job, guys. You're very creative, to be honest. Super. Let's continue with the following one. So as you can see, this is all your imagination. No hay mucho acá. Lo que está allí es simplemente la imaginación de uno. That is the important thing about a short story. Que con poco se diga mucho. Paula says, I don't believe there is a boy in the basement. The child thought there is a boy and it's just his imagination. I agree with you, Paula. To some extent, I agree with you. But why did the mother junk him out? There was definitely something that the mother wanted to hide. So I think that Valentina is right in that case. It was something alive. Or Beatriz is also right because it could be a zombie as well. So yeah, good job. Let's move on with the following story. Um, <laughs> Paula, that makes sense. Exactly, because the Christmas gifts were hidden there. <laughs> that happened to me when I was a kid. So yeah, that is something, a possibility. Super. Paula tries to, to make this into a logical thing. <laughs> That's great. Super. Hey, we're going to read a following story, the nunchucks. Do we have any volunteer for the nunchucks for this time? Do we or? Bastian, super, thanks a lot. So Bastian, whenever you're ready, you start. Okay. Yes, I can hear you perfectly. When my daughter was two, I found her paper towel tu tubes tied with a wire in the air. I asked her what, what she was doing. She said she was practicing her nunchucks. I was very confused as she didn't have any way of knowing what they were. I asked her what she meant. And she said that Adam had told her how to make them and showed her each night how to use them. She insisted on saying that Adam told her to practice because she may need to know how to defend herself someday. I almost freaked out, but asked what her asked her what Adam looked like. She said he was tall, blonde, and had blue eyes. She said, Mommy, you know how he looks. You know him. After that, I have to leave the room. 
four months before she was born, my tall, blonde, blue-eyed martial, martial arts pro friend had died of a brain aneurysm at the age of 28, 20, 27. Super, Bastian. Thanks a lot. Very good job. And let me say that you have very good juncture. Eh, juntas bastante bien una palabra con la otra. Así que, very good. Okay, so this is a ghost story. Vamos a ver de qué se trata. Towel tops. So, cuando mi hija tenía dos años, encontró this, the papal towel tops. Los rollos del papel confort atados, tied, with a wire, con un cable, in the air. I asked her what she was doing, qué estaba haciendo, y dijo que estaba practicando los nunchacos. Estaba muy confundida porque ella no tenía ni una forma de saber lo que eran. What they were. Esto se refiere a los nunchucks. I asked her, le pregunté a lo que se refería. Y ella me dijo que Adam le había dicho cómo hacerlos y le mostró cada noche cómo usarlos. Ella insistía en decir que Adam le había dicho cómo practicar porque ella quizás en el futuro necesitaba saber cómo defenderse algún día. I almost freaked out. Freaked out quiere decir enloquecer. I almost freaked out. Pero le pregunté cómo eh, se veía Adam. Y aquí dijo, Adam era alto, eh, blonde, y tenía ojos azules. Dijo, mommy, you know how he looks. Sabes cómo se ve, tú lo conoces. After that, I had to leave the room four months before she was born, cuatro meses antes de que ella naciera. My mi alto, eh, rubio y de ojos azules, un pro de las artes marciales, amigo, había muerto de un aunerismo, I think, aunerism, at the age of 27. So this is a real story from Reddit, guys. Someone wrote this. So why was the little girl able to see Adam? What do you think? Why? What happened in this case? What was Adam? Let's see if you got this. I'm sorry, Sophia, but <laughs> it's part of storytelling. <laughs> storytelling is a very important part. Well, horror and terror is a very important part of that. Okay, Paula, because the children have a clean soul, okay? A pure soul. And okay, and what can you do if you have a pure soul? What are you able to do? Okay, do you have more ideas? Why was the little girl able to see Adam at the age of two? Any reason? The friend had died. Or maybe there was someone <laughs> practicing nunchucks who looked exactly the same as Adam. Maybe. Okay, what do you see in this case? You say, Jorge, that a combine of the little girl with the mother into the pregnant, maybe? You said that she imagined that? Paula says you can see paranormal things and doesn't care about that. Okay, okay. So when you're younger, you don't really get scared about some things that you see, maybe. Okay, I agree with you. That's an important point. Good. So yeah, Sophia says another thing, maybe because it's supposed that kids can see dead people and stuff. Oh, okay, it's, it's very similar. I agree with you, Sophia. It's supposed that kids can see dead people and stuff. We don't know. It, it's all con conjectures. So, um, very good job. Now, now let's continue with our final story. So, this is a, a, a super short ghost story. A very, very short. Okay, Paula says one thing, because when you, one second, when you grow, you became scared about many things. Exactly, Paula. And that is the literary topic, man versus man, because you get scared of, our own, of your own frights, of our, or your own fears in that sense. 
So yeah, very good. Let's continue then with our last story for today. So this is a super short ghost story. It goes like this. Mommy, the man at the top of the stairs says you should leave. That is one of the shortest ghost stories that I could find. Uh, for example, there are a lot of stories that could be only two sentences. Um, hay un libro que se llama Santiago en 100 palabras, for example, uh, que son historias muy, muy cortas y las historias no necesariamente tienen que tener muchas cosas, pero son ciertos elementos los que las hacen ser historias. In this case, mommy, the man at the top of the stairs says you should leave. Mam mamá, el hombre que está arriba de la escalera dice que debes irte. So, this is a short story, but this is incomplete. So, I want you to... Yes, Jorge, that's a micro stories. Micro cuentos, exactly. That is uh, Santiago in Cien Palabras. Okay, so this is the last activity for today. Can you continue with this story? Can you write a very small paragraph in the chat to continue with this story? Mommy, the man at the top of the stairs says you should leave. Can you try to continue to write something about this one? So I will, I will give you a few minutes for this and then I am going to read your final paragraph. It could be a few sentences. It, it doesn't need to be very long, but it has to make sense. Así que esa es la challenge, que tenga sentido con eso. So we'll give you like three minutes to think about this one and then we start checking. So let's go with this one. Si tienen alguna pregunta o lo que sea, here I am, you know. Ah, ok. Jorge pregunta, what is at the top of the stairs? Quiere decir como arriba de las escaleras. En este caso, por ejemplo, puede ser un niño que esté abajo y en las escaleras de arriba hay un hombre, por ejemplo.
Okay, guys, two more minutes and we check. So far, very nice comments. Hey guys, you're very creepy people. Very nice ideas. To be honest, this is awesome. This is gold, your ideas. Okay, so we're going to start. So Sophia was the first one. She said, okay, mommy, the man at the top of the stairs says you should leave. You should leave because he will get mad and take me to the other side with him. So I won't be able to see you again. Wow, this is a topic which is called um, a farewell. That is a farewell. Una despedida, Sofia. So very good job. That is a literary topic. Okay, let's continue with Bastian. Okay, Bastian says, I know, darling, just stay here and don't be quiet. And be quiet, sorry. Just stay here and be quiet. I'll be right back. Okay, that's... That's nice. <laughs> That's very nice because there is some kind of familiarity with the men in that sense, Bastian. So I really like that. That is very abject, abjecto in this sense. Okay, Jorge says, and don't stop to look at me. He says, come with me and play in the basement. I have gifts. Wow, that sounds like a, like the boogeyman. The boogeyman. I don't know if you know, but the boogeyman is como el viejo del saco. That is like the boogeyman. So very good idea, Jorge. That is also a literary topic. The gift is an important symbol in that sense. Okay, Paula says, Mommy, why did he say that? I am really scared. I, want, I don't want to be here. Please, let's go out. His mommy went upstairs and she saw the TV on and thought he was the children heard. Okay, Paula, very good job there. So it was the TV. It wasn't anybody there. Great job there. Super. Uh, that is like the logical exit as well. So good, good idea there. Hey, let's see what Franco has to say. Okay, you already forgot your pills. Better take them so you don't hear it again. <laughs> wow, Franco. So there you're also talking about an important topic, mental illness. So that is very important as well and very frequent in literature, the mental illness. Good idea. Okay, let's see what Valentina has. Super, the mother was confused and went to see if this was a joke of her child. But then she saw the old man. She remembered his face because that man was the owner of the house and she murdered him. <gasps> wow, Valentina, that is also a very good idea. That is a very important topic. That is obviously a ghost in that sense. So this is a very good representation of a phantasmagoric story of a house. So that is also a very important topic that repeats a lot in storytelling. So guys, I loved your ideas today. You were very clever, to be honest, very creative. So very good job, to be honest. Today, congrats. So guys, that is all for today. Thank you very much for your kind participation. It's always highly appreciated. That's all for today. Today, we learn how to identify main literary devices used in a plot. In this case, the plot of a short story. Um, short stories are like this, and we're going to write one in the future, 
in the few classes that we have left. So it's very helpful if you can review literary devices, metaphors, symbolic things, things like that. And this is also helpful for your language test, I think. So guys, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank a lot, thanks a lot for participating. You are great people. Good night. Thank you for connecting at this time of the night. It's pretty late, 9.22 already. So that's going to be it for today. Great stories. I loved your stories, guys. So thank you, Jorge. Thank you, Franco, very much. Thank you, Beatriz. Thank you, Valentina. Thank you, Paula. Martin, thanks a lot. Um, Beatriz, Bustos, you too. Martias, Catalina. Take care, Bastian, you too. Nicole, bye-bye. Melissa, see you in the next one. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Sofia, thank you for participating. Oh, thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you, Martin. See you in the next one. Jorge, take care. See you in the next one. Beatriz, you too. Bye-bye, Matias. Thank you for coming. And see you, Martin. Bye-bye. Super. I really, uh, I'm happy because you enjoyed it, Jorge. Thank you for the comment. Have a good night. Bye-bye. See you, Matias. See you, Martin. Thank you for coming, guys. See you in the next one.